of course, is composed by the late, great So great, I forgot his name. <music> Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Before I get started with the actual video today, I wanted to make a couple of quick announcements, a couple of things that I'm really excited about. Uh, first of all, I recently filmed a collaboration with the quotable Shayuk. Uh, check out his channel, by the way, it's uh, linked to in my description below. Uh, he and I speak about the uh, Sigrid album uh, that was released a month, month or so ago, and this video is going to be exclusive to his channel, so go check it out, his channel, watch for the video, it should be posted within the next week, I think. So yeah, I had a lot of fun doing that video, and uh, so hopefully it's the first of many collabs with Shyok. And also, uh, just yesterday I filmed an interview, my first interview, that I'm going to be putting up on the channel. Uh, I'm really excited about it. This is a guy who's he's a good friend, and he's so much fun to listen to. He's been in the uh, record store business for about 40 years now. He's the owner of a local store. And, uh, yeah, we chatted for, like, two and a half hours. I've got 90 minutes of video to uh, sift through and distill down to a uh, an actual uh, workable, watchable video. So it actually will probably end up being in two segments. Uh, so, yeah, sometime hopefully in the next month. I will get that edited down and uh, at least the first part posted for you. Uh, the good news about all this is that uh, our yard cleanup from Snowpocalypse 2019 is officially done, so my weekends are going to be much more free, so I will have time to edit that video. It is a huge task, so uh, one that I am, I am looking forward to and I'm not looking forward to at the same time. So, yes, uh, I will keep you posted, or you can just watch, for, watch my channel for... Uh, the video. It should come out sometime in the next month or so, I think. But anyway, as for today's video at hand, I'm going to be doing a little something different. I'm going to be shining the spotlight on an obscure and sometimes overlooked corner of my music collection, and that is TV soundtracks. Specifically, I'm going to talk about my favorite TV shows as illustrated by their soundtrack releases. Now, I'm uh, actually pretty fortunate in that I was able to keep my top five favorite TV shows list mostly intact. Uh, because, you know, obviously I'm doing this based on the soundtrack releases. The one possible question mark would be The Big Bang Theory. Uh, it is one of my favorite shows, but of course there is no soundtrack release for it, so I wasn't able to put it in my top five. But then the more I thought about it, it's probably not really in my top five. It's in my top ten, but probably not my top five. So yeah, I was able to keep my list mostly intact. Another possible exception is uh, a certain TV franchise that has had multiple series. Uh, I could probably have p put a third uh, series of that in my top five, but uh, I just to keep the list with a bit more of a variety, I've limited that to two. And uh, speaking of which, let's start off the list with my number five pick. That is Star Trek Voyager. Now, as I said, I'm trying not to overload my list with Star Trek, uh, but this show is uh, probably my second favorite Star Trek show for a number of reasons. First of all, it had probably the best pilot episode of any Star Trek series. I mean, normally with, uh, as Star Trek shows go, the first season, uh, not to mention the first episode, of course, is kind of awkwardly written. The cast is a little comf uh, uncomfortable. They haven't quite fit into their roles yet, and the chemistry between them is not all, all that great. But the pilot episode of Voyager, Caretaker, it seemed it felt like they hit the ground running with that. The cast seemed to gel immediately right away. The story was good. Uh, the acting is was always good on that show. And uh, having the soundtrack here, of course, the music, especially for the pilot episode, was fantastic. It is by uh, one of the principal composers for the uh, nine, 80s and 90s Star Trek series, Jay Chataway. Uh, he worked in film a bit before he joined on as one of Star Trek's primary composers. Uh, TV composers. But yeah, a fantastic score from an excellent episode of Star Trek. And another thing about Star Trek Voyager is it probably had the best theme music, main title theme, of any Star Trek series out there. Uh, in this case, it was composed by the late, great Jerry Goldsmith, uh, who had done two or three Star Trek feature films, and of course many, many other feature films, uh, before he was invited to do the theme for Star Trek Voyager. So a fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous theme song for a good show. And another reason I like Star Trek Voyager, uh, particularly I came to 
reappreciate it in the last several years. Uh, I own it on DVD and I've been rewatching the DVDs. Because of how divided the political atmosphere in the United States has become over the last several years, uh, just the uh, notion, if you're not familiar with Star Trek Voyager, it's basically two crews, uh, a Starfleet crew and a, uh, a rebel, you know, renegade crew, are forced to join together onto the same ship to survive and find their way home from the other side of the galaxy. It's like a 75-year trip, and so they have to, to work together to compromise to try and make it home. And just the fact that they are willing to do that and that, you know, common sense and logic and compromise and patience has helped this crew accomplish their goal when, you know, in Washington, D.C. right now, you couldn't get them to compromise if you pointed a gun to their head, practically. So, anyway, back on track onto the subject matter. Don't want to get mired down in polit political talk, but uh, yeah, that is one reason that I really uh, enjoy and continue to appreciate Star Trek Voyager. Now, onto my number four pick, and that is a Showtime series that's been running for nine seasons, I think. It's, it's either started or about to start or has just finished its ninth season. I've lost count. But that is Shameless. Now, I checked it out during, uh, I think it was either season five or six. Uh, my brother had been watching it all along, and he kept talking about it. But it, that kind of show, the kind of show with anti-heroes, with, you know, main characters with few, if any, redeeming qualities, has never been my thing. That's why I've never gotten into Sons of Anarchy Breaking Bad, uh, The Sopranos, or any of that other stuff. So, you know, shows like Shameless typically are not my thing, but for some reason I started watching it in season five uh, or six, whichever it was, and I became addicted immediately. It's just the characters, I mean, there's more to the characters than meets the eye in the beginning, which is kind of making me wonder, you know, if other shows of its ilk that I was talking about a second ago might uh, have that same... Uh, you know, underlying thing. So maybe I will check out some of those shows later on. But yeah, Shameless, I absolutely love Shameless. And the soundtrack is is uh, cultivated and curated by, you can tell, by real music fans, music snobs. This CD in particular, it's, it's actually on a label called Varez Sarabande, which is known for orchestral uh, film scores and such. So having a song-based uh, soundtrack release was an, an unusual thing for them and this is absolutely filled with a bunch of uh, indie rock bands you know otherwise unsigned bands and stuff and that was the kind of music that Shameless showed uh, or showcased during their first several seasons uh, recently they've gotten into more um, slightly more mainstream stuff like uh, a couple of seasons ago they had a song by Fitz and the Tantrums uh, on an episode and you know they've got more slightly higher profile acts but but yeah uh, the show and its music are something to uh, something to check out if you haven't yet. So yeah, Shameless is one of my favorite shows now, gotta say. Okay, the next one on this list is a bit of an unusual one because it is the only one in my list that I have on vinyl. And that's pretty much by default because I don't think it's ever been put out on CD before. It is available digitally, but uh, well, I don't like to get things digitally unless that's the only way to get them. But anyway, this one is The Goldbergs. Yes, I absolutely love this sitcom for uh, several ways. Uh, I really, really identify with the character of Adam. Uh, well, first of all, the show is set in the 80s. I'm an 80s kid, so it was my decade, so to speak. And I am so much like Adam in so many ways. First of all, I am the youngest of three siblings. And also, uh, I have an older brother and an oldest sister, just like Adam has on the show. And also, a long time ago, I lost count of the nerd-centric posters on the walls of Adam's room and the t-shirts that he wears uh, throughout the show. Oh gosh, Indiana Jones, Time Bandits, Tron, Star Wars, uh, Weird Al's movie UHF, Quantum Leap. I mean, the list goes on and on. So uh, yeah, I am very much like Adam. Basically, if you take away the fact that he uh, is obsessed with uh, amateur filmmaking and, and you know making home movies and stuff, I basically was Adam Goldberg, pretty much. Uh, my mother wasn't quite the smother mother that uh, Beverly is, but well, you get the idea. Anyway, yeah, I just absolutely love the show, and this this soundtrack is pretty awesome if you can get it. It's got the full version of the very 80s synthwave title, main title theme, which is an original song, by the way. It's not a song from the 80s, song created especially for the show. But yeah, a lot of the shows that uh, Erica 
and Barry performed <laughs> throughout the show. But yeah, uh, and yeah, Erica, I can't remember the actress's name, but yeah, she actually has a really good voice. It's making me wonder, uh, I still intend to seek out, I haven't checked yet or not, if she has actually made any albums. So, uh, but yeah, a very, very fun listen to uh, this. If you if you haven't uh, found it yet, uh, look for it online, listen to it. If you like the Goldbergs TV show, you'll love the, the uh, soundtrack album. So anyway, on to my number two pick in the list. Uh, you heard me mention Quantum Leap a minute ago. Yes. Here is the soundtrack album from Quantum Leap. This was a uh, TV show from uh, 89 to 93. I think it ran five seasons, four and a half seasons, basically. And it was a fantastic show. It is It is literally my number two favorite television show of all time. Uh, you got to check it out. Uh, go to Wikipedia and read the description of it. Uh, it's a very innovative, fun show. And uh, it, it may be a time travel show, but don't let that turn you off if you're not a time travel or sci-fi fan. Uh, because it keeps the sci-fi trappings in the background at a minimum and focuses on the show's strengths as a dramatic anthology. I mean, it's got the, you know, the same two central characters, Sam and Al, but otherwise, uh, you know, all the, the surrounding characters all, are all different every, uh, in every episode. Uh, most episodes are dramatic, some episodes are funny, uh, some episodes are musical in nature. It's just, it really just goes all over the map. You'll get a different episode every time. And uh, the show dealt a lot of times with topical social issues like uh, racism, sexism, homophobia, uh, prejudice against the developmentally disabled. I mean, the list goes on. And as for the soundtrack, uh, it really shows off the variety and breadth of the TV show itself. I mean, it has uh, a lot of uh, orchestral stuff. About two-thirds of the album is orchestral from you know all the different moods. There was a, a Western-themed episode, so there's a score from that show. And, you know, dramatic episodes, uh, there's a vampire-themed show, so there's, you know, kind of a horror uh, or a gothic sort of a score in there, and just all sorts of stuff in here. And also, the other third is uh, vocal. Yes, it gives Scott Bakula a chance to show off his singing talents. And he was, I think he's been on Broadway, I'm not sure, but he's done a lot of musical theater, and he's got a great voice. I mean, there's everything from hair metal. Uh, he did an, an episode called, well, you can see the picture right here, it was an episode called Glitter Rock, where he uh, sing. He's the singer of a Kiss-type band that uh, actually has to solve his own murder uh, before it happens. And uh, so, yeah, there's a hair metal song in here, as well as a power ballad. There are actually, I think, two songs from here. Oh, no, just one, sorry. But, uh, yeah, there's also a Broadway, uh, one or two Broadway tunes in here, because he leaps into a, a Broadway actor at one in one episode, as well as Easy Listening. Uh, so, yeah, just... If you've never watched the show, I urge you to seek it out. Watch some episodes of it. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, but yeah, and the soundtrack is just fantastic. It's 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 a jukebox, basically. It's just a wonderful, wonderful listen. And a real reflection of, as I said, the diversity and depth, uh, breadth of the show itself. So anyway, I could go on and on talking about Quantum Leap, trust me. Uh, but anyway, on to my number one favorite TV show of all time. Uh, I mentioned a certain television franchise uh, a little bit ago. Yes, as if you haven't guessed by now, Star Trek The Next Generation is my favorite television show of all time. Quantum Leap is a close second, and depending on my mood, it sneaks into number one occasionally. But yeah, this is what turned me into a Star Trek fan. I love the show, and uh, I have probably 20, actually probably close to 24 hours worth of music from this show. I attend on at some point doing one, or it's probably going to be more than one uh, video about my Star Trek music collection. That's, you know, that's a mini-series in itself. But, uh, yeah, and, yeah, as I said, I have over 20 hours of music f just from this show, and there are many episodes that are better examples of the morality plays and social allegories that Star Trek is absolutely famous for, but probably the best example of the show's action-adventure aspects is their two-part episode, The Best of Both Worlds. It was the season three and four cliffhanger. And it's also my favorite score of any Star Trek anywhere, TV or film. And this is just an absolutely bombastic, amazing score. Probably three months doesn't go by that I listened to this at least once, ever since I've gotten this the soundtrack. I, I first got it in 1992, I think, think was when it was first released. This is actually an expanded re-release that was put out in 2014, I think, 2013. 
Uh, but yeah, I just absolutely, as if you can't tell, I just love Star Trek The Next Generation, and I love this score in particular. It goes through my head from beginning to end sometimes. I Sometimes I don't have to play the soundtrack. I can just listen to it in my head from front to back. That's how much I've listened to it and how much I love the music from that episode in particular, done by probably the best Star Trek composer, TV composer of, any, of all time, Ron Jones. And uh, yeah, I've got... Yeah, the majority of Star Trek The Next Generation music I have is by Ron Jones. That's something I will show you in a future video, I'm sure. But anyway, yeah, I could keep on talking about Star Trek for hours and hours, so yeah, cut, cut myself off here. I'd like to go on and mention some honorable mentions, uh, TV soundtracks that I have of some other uh, favorite TV shows of past and present. Uh, first of all, The Orville, since we just got finished talking about Star Trek, right? Uh, yes, The Orville is uh, created and produced by Seth MacFarlane, who created and produced American Dad and uh, Family Guy. Uh, this is a live-action show. It is very much an homage, or a tribute, a love letter, if you will, to Star Trek The Next Generation. And, of course, I have no problem with that. Uh, it's very well done. He doesn't quite have the writing finesse that the Star Trek writers had, so he's not quite as delicate with the social allegory stuff and the finer points of... Uh, writing and stuff, but that's not enough to distract me from the show. I love the show. I, I adore it, and I like the soundtrack. Uh, I It was a bit of a disappointment uh, in that they uh, they seem to include on here, it's actually a two-disc set uh, released by La La Land Records last year. Uh, it seems to include more of the shorter action cues uh, than rather than the longer, more atmospheric, thematic sort of uh, selections so I was a little bit disappointed in that because the music the show does pause every once in a while to stretch its musical legs and give you a nice beautiful theme and not enough of those I don't think were present on this uh, release but still a very good release and I'm very glad that I bought it but yeah the Orville is a fun show to watch very fun uh, the next one is the Drew Carey show this was a sitcom from the 90s I think and anybody who watched this sitcom or owns this soundtrack could tell that its showrunners and producers were true lovers of music. I mean, this has so much stuff in here. The Edgar Winter Group, Backman Turner Overdrive, uh, Tower of Power, uh, Reverend Horton Heat. I mean, it's just all sorts of classic rock and pop and stuff. And they did a few musical episodes throughout the show, so they got some show tunes in here from... Uh, Oh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and a, probably a couple of other ones in here. But And uh, another cool thing about this show was that I think every season it had a different theme song, completely different theme. The first one was an original one. The next one, uh, actually, I, I probably have the seasons out of order, but yeah, they had a song called Five O'Clock World by a 50s or 60s group called The Vogues. It was kind of a doo-wop, just sort of a, a Motown-ish sort of a group. And that was a great, that was probably my favorite theme of the show. And then they had the Presidents of the United States of America come in and do the theme, Cleveland Rocks, which is what this uh, CD is named after. Uh, you know, they did that theme for one, maybe even two seasons on that one. Oh, there was, I'm, I'm sure there was another one in here somewhere. I can't think of it right now. But uh, yeah, it was a good show. It was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, the music, as I said, was just, I mean, hey, 24 tracks on here. But yeah, this this is a fun gem. Even if you didn't watch the show, it's a fun CD to have. So pick it up if you see it somewhere. Uh, the next show is uh, a rather unusual one. This is one that uh, you ought to look up on Wikipedia to learn about the premise. It's got one of the most inventive and fun premises of any show ever, I think. And that is Pushing Daisies. It ran for two seasons back in 2008 is the soundtrack release. So... But yeah, it was just a fun show. It was told kind of like a fairy tale. Uh, as I said, I won't get into the premise. It, it, it takes a while to explain, so yeah, look it up on Wikipedia. There was perhaps not a moment of the show, of any episode of the show, that didn't have uh, you know music underscore in the background, which might have been one of the problems. I mean, it sometimes there was just a little bit too much going on. In my opinion, you need to have some... you know, some pauses in the music score at some points, and I think that was one drawback of... Pushing Daisies was they just pretty much packed the episode, every episode with music from front to back. But yeah, the soundtrack album features three songs. All the all the rest of it is uh, the score from the episodes. But yeah, it features three songs by two of the show's stars. Kristen Chenoweth, uh, who's gone on to, uh, actually I think before and since, she's done albums. She's done a lot of musical theater, you know, Broadway and stuff. So she's she's got a beautiful voice. She's a great singer. 
and also Ellen Green, who another, was another star of the show. Yeah, each, each of them did a song by themselves, and then the third song is a duet between the two. Uh, Birdhouse in Your Soul. Uh, yeah, the, the fact that they chose such an obscure song, it, that's a song by They Might Be Giants, that was a draw for picking this uh, album up. And Hopelessly Devoted to You, that's the one that Christian Chenoweth sings solo. That was from the uh, the soundtrack from Greece, the movie, with Olivia Newton-John. So yeah, it's a, a fun album to listen to, and the show was fun. If you ever find it, you got to check it out. And some of the names of some of these tracks, I mean, uh, Emerson and the Bitches is one of the uh, track names, and Follow the Yellow Thick House. I hate with this kind of a sense of humor, how could I not pick up the soundtrack album? Seriously. So yeah, that was that's a lot of fun. The show was a lot of fun, and I'm sorry it only ran two seasons, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch. Anyway, <clears throat> losing my voice here. The next one is American Dreams. Now this was a show from uh, the early 2000s. I'm pretty sure I got that one right. And it only ran for three seasons. They were going to put out, uh, at least I think they were going to put out a series of soundtracks, but they only ever put out one. And this show was set in the 60s, and it was one of the central plot, uh, continuing plot threads was the beginnings of the TV show American Bandstand with Dick Clark. And uh, that gave the show an opportunity to uh, put many of the period songs, uh, songs from the period into the show, and also plenty of opportunities for musical guests. And that was one of the things uh, that you'll see on this album, and that was uh, the show was fond of doing. It brought in contemporary musicians to recreate classic hits that were performed on bandstand. I know uh, Nick Carter played Jay from Jay and the Americans, and uh, I believe the original song is on here, but not the Nick Carter version. Uh, but yeah, and this album, as I said, features several of those. Uh, Vanessa Carlton sings Wishin' and Hopin', which I think was a Leslie Gore song. And yes, Stacey Orico uh, with Brittany Snow and Vanessa Lengis, those are two of the stars of the show, sing My Boyfriend's Back. But it also has hits by the Everly Brothers and Martha and the Vandellas. I mean, just it's a fantastic album if you want classic hits as well as covers of uh, classic hits by re you know recent artists. It's an album to pick up. So yeah, that was a good show. And the first season is available on DVD, but the uh, second and third seasons never showed up on DVD. Ver a real pity. I mean, that was just a great show. And rounding out my list of honorable mentions is Sequest DSV. This kind of ties in with Star Trek The Next Generation because, in my opinion, it was basically Star Trek The Next Generation underwater. Uh, so yeah, Trek with a dash of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea thrown in. Uh, the show was always grounded in real-world science, which was one reason I was a big fan of it. I'm not necessarily a science buff, but just the fact that they took the time to ground the show in reality instead of just making it science fiction flights of fancy. But unfortunately, in season two, that's where the show went. Uh, they threw out half the cast because they weren't young and pretty enough, brought in a bunch of new characters who weren't nearly as good, and they brought a, put a whole bunch of more... Uh, outlandish sci-fi elements in the show completely just destroyed the show but season one which is what the soundtrack is from was excellent uh, dr robert ballard who's a geologist and oceanographer i think actually appeared at the end of each episode of season one to describe how the real world science fit into the episode so yeah i just i love season one of sequest dsv but yeah another excellent tv show that i really really enjoyed from years past so anyway, I hope you enjoyed my list of my five favorite TV shows of all time, as illustrated by their soundtrack releases, as well as the miscellaneous honorable mentions I threw in. And uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video, or about anything on my channel, or music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find the link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.